what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button i hope you like this video this is gonna be insecure season three episode three now look there's a piece missing and i tried to watch it again today and that same piece is missing my i don't know some of the dvr i don't know but i think i got the gist of it that's why i waited to try to watch it again but i think i pretty much got the gist of it so if i missed something i'm sorry so we start the episode off we see Issa in bed with daniel because remember last week they had agreed they was going to share the bed and they get to talking you know that that morning hey how you doing i never understand how people with the morning breath like that's all i think about whenever i see people like first thing in the morning having conversations on tv i be like morning breath like y'all don't smell each other's breath. anyway and so um they um they get to talking or whatever and then next thing you know she's he sees that she was eating in the bed and he was like, Issa, for real, you eating in the bed? And she was like, the heart wants what it wants. And he was like, well, what else does the heart want? And they get to kissing and then he gets to traveling down south and all that good stuff. And I was like, ooh, okay. And then this when I knew it was a fantasy. When he threw her the daggone uh, hot Cheetos that she was eating in bed. <laughs> and she's... <laughs> talking about some yeah I like it spicy yeah it was it was funny but anyway so she's imagining it like up until the point of you know what does the heart want all of that was really happening and they're laying there and you know again it's that sexual tension that should I kiss you maybe I shouldn't moment and Issa ends up getting out of bed like well gotta get to work you know so she's talking to Molly you know and Molly got look Molly then took Flavor Flav to the doggy spa he getting paw massages and spa treatments. And Molly was like, Issa was like, do they take walk-ins? Because Flavor Flav living better than me. And she, Molly said, well, he's going to have separation anxiety, you know, when I start work. And she was like, well, are you excited? She said, yeah, this will be the first time I'm working with, you know, all black people. Like, you know, it'll be interesting to see. You know, she said they probably got shea butter, you know, uh, dispensers in the bathroom and stuff. And I was like, okay, here we go. So... They get to talking or whatever, and she tells Molly about the job interview. Um, she said she still got to go on the interview for the property manager, but, you know, it's kind of looking kind of promising. She said she Googled the apartment, and the apartments look, you know, kind of decent in a decent neighborhood and everything. And um, she said, yeah, I know you'd be happy to, um, you know, get your own spot. And, you know, of course, Issa was like, well, you know, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> and, you know, Molly was like, sleeping on the couch wasn't too bad. Issa was like, oh. Molly was like, God damn. <laughs> like, come on, Issa. And she said, well, you know, it just got, the couch got to be uncomfortable. And we just agreed to let me sleep on the couch, you know, sleep on the bed. But we're not doing nothing. He got his side, I got mine. Molly was like, you are just flirting with disaster. Like, you playing games and you flirting. And Issa was like, look, yes, I think about having sex with him. Like, I think about it a lot. Like, I'm thinking about it right now. But, you know, she's like, first she was like, I'm not thinking about it right now. She's like, well, yeah, I am. She said, but we're, you know, we're handling this. We're adults. We're handling it. We're good. So y'all already see where that's about to go. Left. So, um, Issa. No, next we see Daniel. Daniel done hooked up with Khalil. Remember last week, Issa talked him into go ahead and, and swallowing his pride a little bit and hooking up with Khalil. And so they do. Um, I mean, so he does, excuse me, and he's playing a track for him. And, you know, remember, Daniel's track's a real laid-back, jazzy, neo-soul-like, you know, maybe some Frank Ocean-type track. And Khalil was like, okay, that's hot, that's hot. He was like, you know, um, but let's change, let, he was like, let's let's tweak some stuff, because, you know, Spider, that's the guy they're doing the tracks for, you know, he likes his tracks a little such and such and such and such, you know. So he was like, turn this bass down, bring this bass up, you know, music talk, I don't know all that shit. But, and the beat did sound pretty good, you know, but it, has, it was sped up a little bit, a little bit more, a little more, a little thump to it. And he was like, so, you know, you know, Khalil was like, how you like that? And you could tell that Daniel wasn't happy, but he was like, well, you know, it, it does loop. You know, he wasn't happy about it, but Khalil's kind of letting him know, look, what you did was pretty decent, but for Spider, he gonna want a little bit more of this, this, and that. So then we see um, Issa... And her, she was going on the job fair. Remember, Issa told her employer they need to get a little bit more uh, diversity uh, up in this spot, you know. And 
So they have this job fair where there's a whole lot of like nonprofits, you know, all these different programs and stuff, and you know they getting their booth set up and everything, and they're like, yeah, you know, we here to hire some minorities, and of course, um, who's Issa's little sidekick? Y'all know who I'm talking about. She was like, you know, legally we can't really say that, even though that's what we here to do. You know, Issa was like, yeah, we ain't wasting no time on no white people. She was like, oh yeah, white people, their time is done. I'm like, anyway, so. You know, so they did, they're getting everything set up, and all of a sudden, this dance troupe comes through, they're all, they got the white makeup on, and they're dancing, and they got the drums and everything, and it's really nice, and Issa is like, you could tell Issa was like, what? And, um, come to find out, it's, uh, it's like Wee Beats or something like that, what is it, Play Beats? I forget the name of it, but it's an after-school um, organization that deals primarily with, you know, getting kids connected to music, and exposing them to the arts, and taking them to different programs and letting them see performances and stuff like that. And you can tell Issa is really intrigued by the program. Like, oh, my gosh, like, what? Molly shows up on her first day of work, all the white folks, melon and popping. And she is like, whoo, look at us. You know, like, looking like a McDonald's commercial. Molly got a job. You know, they joking and everything. And I was like, all right, Molly, the black jokes are cool for a minute, but Okay. And they show her to her office. She got a nice big office, you know, and all that good stuff. And, um, you know, for a second, she lets herself kind of be happy. She danced a little bit, you know, do a little something, something. And then, you know, later on, we see her talking to her assistant, wanting to know about a, a particular law program. And her assistant says, oh, yeah, we don't have that. And she was like, really? Like, y'all don't? Y'all don't have that? And she was like, yeah, you know, you know, we don't do this, that, and the other. She was like, but we just use a carrier. Um, the carrier comes between this time and that time. She was like, unless it's, you know, Marcus. If it's Marcus, it's going to be more like 530-ish, you know. And Molly was like, oh, well, that's just that's just not how we did things in my old firm. I was like, all right, Molly, you about to get yourself caught up. This whole situation with Molly and her new job reminded me of... Did any of y'all look at Soul Food? Drop it in them comments. The TV show Soul Food. And remember when Nicole Parker's, um, I don't know why I can't think of her character's name now, but remember when she left her big high price, you know, white firm and when she went to go work for the black firm and how she just could not get used to the way things was running. And she used to always make these little smart comments about people being incompetent. She's not going to accept incompetence and they just don't do things right here. And she ended up, remember she ended up getting fired and she had to go back to white corporate America because she just couldn't, she couldn't work with the black folk. It reminded me a lot of that where, you know, Molly just making these little comments. And I mean, even to the point where, um, well, I'll get to that because I don't want to talk. I'll get to that. So there was a part. That's the part that sort of cut out because Molly, there was a part where Molly was talking to her coworker um, about helping her work on. She was like, well, I'm just going to work through lunch. And her coworker was like, oh, girl, I was going to go. She asked her, did she want to go walking with her because she was in the Fitbit challenge with her mother-in-law. She couldn't let the mother-in-law win. And Molly was like, well, no, nah, I was going to kind of work through lunch and the lady agreed to, you know, help Molly or whatever. But I know something else happened. I just, my, my DVR cut out. But I'm sure it was something more along the lines of Molly comparing this job to her old job and things, excuse me, things of that nature. So we see, um, then we see Molly, I mean, uh, Issa with Daniel at the laundromat. The lady, the lady walking around the laundromat still in clothes and, you know, Molly's telling um, Daniel about um, her the job offer because she went on oh she went on the interview and you know it's a probably a mid range apartment you know it ain't luxury but it ain't the hood you know and he was explaining the guy was explaining to her what her responsibilities would be and you know and I don't think she was really feeling it too much until he told her how much her rent was going to be now those apartments go for fifteen hundred dollars a month but if she decided to be the, agreed to be the property manager she would get them for 750 molly was i mean Issa was like 750 seven what excuse me can you say that again he said 750 and she was like yeah i mm, you know like give me some food for thought so she's talking to daniel and daniel is talking her out of it he was like really he was like what you gonna do he was like how you gonna be we got y'all and driving for, um, you know, Lyft and doing that. He was like, that's really a lot. You know, it ain't no rush. Like, you're not no burden. She was like, well, you're not just, I don't want to take advantage of your kindness and be a burden. She was like, he was, you know, he was like, you're not a burden. Like, I like having you there. Now, all of a sudden, you like having her there. Two weeks ago, your ass was ready to kick her out. But anyway, and of course, you know, you know, Issa like hearing that. So, of course, she's kind of like, mm, well, you know. 
So then Daniel told her about how things went at the studio, how it didn't go that well, how, you know, Khalil wasn't really feeling his track and he wasn't, you know, he just, he felt like Khalil took all of the soul out of the track and, and, and sort of just, you know, and y'all know how artists are about their music. He was very sensitive and, you know, he didn't like the changes that were made. And Issa was like, yeah, but you know, you, you just got to get in the door. Like, you know, it is what it is. Maybe he knows what Spider, you know, he knows he, he's used to working with Spider. He knows what he likes, you know, you just got to get your foot in the door and, and, and then get in where you fit in, you know. So then we see the girls out at dinner. Um, Kelly is there and their other girlfriend, she's pregnant. And of course she's being all, she extra anyway, but she's being real extra because she's pregnant. And Kelly is like, we got 12 more months of this. And at first Issa was like, yeah. And then Issa was like, what? Because then you had to do the math. Like what, 12 months? What? <laughs> That's a hell of an incubation period. Um, they found out, um, old girl was like, I know y'all got a group text without me. And Molly and Issa tried to, um, say no. Here go Kelly. Yeah, we do. We def we definitely do. And so they end up telling, um, Issa, Molly ends up telling the girls that Issa is, um, now sleeping in the bed with Daniel. And of course they all jump down her back. Issa's like, what, what is wrong with y'all? What? And they were like, see, that's the problem. You and Daniel are trouble. Like y'all always trouble. Y'all are always in some shit. Like this is the problem. They bring up Palm Springs, you know, y'all going to go to Palm Springs. And so, you know, they, they going to come back, you know, we'll get back to that, you know, in another episode, but they introduced the whole Palm Springs thing. And Issa is just trying to convince her friends that they're good, that, you know, her and Daniel in a good place, that nothing's going on. They're just platonic. And, you know, why she can't just stay there a couple of more weeks and keep saving her money and get herself together. And they basically let her know, hell no, 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 no again. Like, that's not, no. Mm-mm. Not going to work. So then we see Issa. They done brought in a couple of the applicants to do these interviews. So it's Issa and old girl. I don't know why I can't remember the girl name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And it's a black applicant. And she's, you know, saying all the right shit. Being all enthusiastic. Talking about how she, you know, really wants to get in at the ground floor. And work and really, really get in with her people. And, you know, she's saying all the shit you say at the job interview. To make it sound like you, this the best job that's ever going to happen, you know. And so old girl leaves Issa alone with the applicant, which I'm sure was strategically done so they could, you know, talk privately. And, um, Issa being her normal awkward self, you know, but old girl was like, so how they really treat you around here? And of course, you know, to, um, you know, to, um, Issa didn't down talk the company. Like she ain't talk it up and make it out to be more than it was, but she didn't downplay it either. You know, she was just like, I mean, it's cool, you know, I like it. And, you know, the girl was like, well, how long have you been working here? She was like, five years. She was like, oh, so you really like it. And I know she was probably thinking five years and you in the same little spot, you know. Oh, that's the other thing that they talked I'm sorry, y'all, to go back. That's the other thing that they talked about at dinner. The, um, Molly was, you know, kind of talking shit about her firm and basically how black it was and, you know, all the black shit that be going on. And they were trying to tell her, look, you need to chill out. Like, you're doing too much. You can't keep comparing it to your old firm. Like, you know, cut them a break or whatever. And Molly was, and then Issa was like, I hope you don't complain like this at work. And she was like, no, just to y'all. But clearly, she has complained because we see her in the boardroom later on in the episode. Um, they, you know, getting ready for their morning meeting. And um, the the head guy, I guess the senior partner, he's not there yet. And Molly was like, well, daggone, we can't even start our meetings on time. I mean... You know, I know about CP time, but, you know, what's this, you know, this a bit much, you know. And they were kind of looking at her like, okay, well, normally he's on a call right now. And, you know, when he takes his calls, we normally just start the meeting without him and just get started. But, you know, and Molly was like, oh, oh okay. You know, like, damn, you know, I put my foot in it. And one of the boys made, one of the dudes made a comment to my son, I guess, at her old firm, they started meetings on time. So clearly Molly has been doing more complaining than she might seem like because they they done picked up on her little attitude. And that's why I said it really reminds me of, um, I don't know why I came up with her character's name, but y'all know Nicole Parker on, um, Nicole Ari Parker, um, her character on um, Soul Food. So then we see Daniel in the studio with Spider. He comes through him and Khalil. Khalil's like, yeah, man, play him that track. You know, play him the track. 
And Daniel plays the original track, not the track that him and Khalil reworked. So, of course, Khalil looking at him crazy, he like, you know, like, why are you playing that track? And Spider was like, yo, that's, that track is kind of dope. Like, I like it. But um, Khalil was like, yeah, Daniel, but we also have a different track. Why don't you play that one? So Daniel plays the second track. And now Spider don't know which one he liked best. He's like, yeah, you know, both of them sound good, but one has got this going on and the other one got this going on. He turned to his friends and he like, yo, man, which ones do y'all like? And they don't really have a definitive answer. So Khalil says, you know what? Since you indecisive about that one, don't worry about it. I got something else for you. So Daniel, you done fucked yourself out of an opportunity. And I feel like... I get it. It's your, it's yours. It's your, it's your um, music. It's, it's you know. I get all of that, but you got to get it when you fit in. And I don't feel like you was totally selling out because it was still your track. They just tweaked it and changed some stuff. But now, whereas you might have sold that track and then got in with Spider, now your ass is stuck because Khalil not Khalil done gave him a different track altogether, and you and he pissed off at you now. I don't know if Khalil's intent was pure or not. But I really don't think he was trying to fuck you over. I don't. I really don't. So we see Issa and Daniel out to the um, lunch together. Daniel's pissed off because of what happened at the studio. He being all snippy talking about other people got their food before them and why they don't have their drink. And Issa is like, well, you know, we got a beautiful view. You know, let's just enjoy the let's just enjoy the view. Let's just enjoy what's going on. Like, why? Why you in a bad mood, you know? And she said, look, you've been in a funky mood all night. Is it me or what? And he said, no. And then he told her about what happened at the studio. And Issa said the same thing I just said. Issa was like, well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just go with the, with the track that you and Khalil had worked? Because she was like, Khalil knows what Spider wants. So why would you not do what? Why wouldn't you just go along with that? And so Khalil was like, because it's my music. And Issa was like, yeah, but... Like, so are you and Khalil just not going to work together anymore? Because I think Issa sees it as a fucked up opportunity. That he done fucked up an opportunity. So he told me some. <laughs> I can't believe you're going to give me some uh, career advice. He's just talking about some, well, what's that supposed to mean? He said, because you don't have no parts of a career. You all over the place. She was like, he said, you don't know what it's like to be passionate about what you do. She was like, I'm passionate about what I do. He said, whatever. You're all over the place. He said, you don't know what's up. And she said, well, I just brought you here, you know, to thank you for everything you've done for me and tell you I was going to take the job, you know, because I just feel like, we sort of maybe, you know, while we try to figure this out, we need some space so we can figure out what's going on with us right now. Because she's not going to pretend like the, the, the sexual tension ain't there, you know. And um, so that's when they got into the argument. And he said something about how he always has to save her. And she was like, excuse me? He was like, yeah, you know, like I'm always here saving you. And she was like, and you could see she was hurt, you know. And she was like, so that's how you really feel? He was like, yeah, that's how I really feel. And so, you know, all of a sudden their drinks come and everything else then. So they go ahead and have dinner. And you see later on that night they land in the bed. And, you know, Issa's facing her way. He's facing his way. They're not speaking to each other. They ain't, talk, talk, they ain't even touching each other. And he apologized. He said, Issa, you know, I really didn't mean what I said. You know, I was just fucked up about what happened at the studio. I was just kind of in my feelings. And she was just like, all right. You know. But she know that he meant what the fuck he said. Like, when people say certain things and they say it a certain way, you know they meant what they said. And so he was like, you know, um, so he rolls over and he starts rubbing on her and he starts kissing her and stuff. And, you know, and she turns over and she kisses him back and they get ready to get in, into the do. And it's a mimic of that opening scene where, you know, he, they start kissing and then he goes down on her. And when he says, you like that, you know... Instead of her in the opening scene saying, yeah, you know, I like that, you know, and they keep going, she stops him and she's like, you know what, this, no, I can't do this. Like, this, this, this doesn't feel right. And I'm proud of Issa. I'm proud of her because, you know, that, if they are going to get together and they are going to sleep together, that ain't, like, apology sex, that can't be it. Because that's all that was. That was, I fucked up, I'm wrong, and, you know, that wouldn't have been good. So that's where the episode ends. So we'll see what happens next week and, you know, how that whole, you see where this whole Issa Daniel thing goes, y'all. 
All right, y'all have a good day. Talk to y'all later. Peace.